Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, from a career, a thriving career, I must add, in oil and gas to pursuing his passion in the health department. We have Goke Balogun coming to share with us his entrepreneurial journey, how he started, where he is, and what the plans for the future are. He's the co-founder of So Fresh NGA Business. He co-runs with his wife, and we look to look forward to having a conversation on all that goes on behind the scenes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I think I was ask you first of all, how is it running a business with your wife? It's quite challenging, um, but for us, it's been very rewarding um, because um, we share the same values, we share the same goals and objectives, mission for the for the for the business. Um, so even though we have challenges here and there, we're able to surmount it. And I think if you have two people like-minded who like who love each other, who are committed to the same goal, um, there's just a power behind that force. So I, I would say it's been very rewarding, but it has its own challenges, you know, that we've worked through over the years. E.G. Uh, I mean, so, you know, the, the fact that, you know, your husband's and wife first and emotions come to play. And so you have to master, you know, the emotions and master, you know, how you relate with each other in and out of work. All right. Let's talk about also the point where you decided that you wanted to transition from oil and gas into what you currently do now. Tell us about that journey. Yeah, so it, it, was, a, it, was, um, it was quite an easy transition for me um, because... It was a personal decision. Um, one, for me, is about making impact. And two, it was about, for me, being able to do more. So at the time I was in the oil, oil and gas industry, yes, I, 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 was, I, I was being paid very well. I was quite comfortable. But I thought that I could give more. There was more side to me than just, you know, working and any a paycheck. And so um, we, we started the business together. I still worked for about four years after that. And then it just got to a point that I, that I, you know, convinced myself that I wanted to do more. I wanted to make, create more impact. And when I see, you know, the close to 100 people that, you know, we employed today and we empower, I, I think, you know, that decision uh, was justified. So um, that was what made the move for me from, you know, from oil and gas to running my business. And this impact you're talking about, what exactly can we say is the impact you have made so far since you started? So when we look at so fresh impact for us is in three ways. One is that as an organization, we believe that nations strive, you know, and progress on the backdrop of healthy and energetic citizens. So we promote the healthy lifestyle. We make healthy food accessible as much as possible to you know Nigerians in the community where we operate at the moment. So for us, that's the first core impact: is preaching healthy lifestyle, promoting healthy lifestyle. The second part is employment. Um, so a, a large group of you know, the people we employ are at the young age, between 20 and 35. And so we provide you know, employment for, for those people. A lot of them even support their families. It might surprise you that you have 20, 25-year-old people supporting families. So for us, you know, that's, that's also impactful. And then the other thing is, as so fresh scale, we have that capacity to help small-scale older farmers in the rural community because 80% of our raw material is fresh fruits and vegetables from Nigeria. So as we scale, we impact the local farmers. Speaking about fresh fruits and, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables in Nigeria, what are some of the challenges? I know that power should definitely be one of them. You know, so in running this business, have you been able, what are these challenges and have you been able to surmount them? A number of very unique challenges to so fresh. So one of them, you know, said is power because we need to preserve fruits. They need to be fresh. Um, supply, supply chain is quite erratic. Um, being able to get things in bulk when uh, you know, at the time needed. Um, that's one of the very unique challenges to what we do. And because the core of our proposition is freshness, so we don't freeze, everything is you know, prepared fresh and made fresh to the customers. So um, we spend a lot, of, a lot on power, that's the truth, to, to make sure that things are preserved and, and things are fine. Um, I mean, we have you know, general things like access to capital to be able to grow and scale a business. I mean, th that's still you know, quite, quite challenging. Um, infrastructure. And you know, um, there's a lot of government uh, interference, I would say. As against supporting businesses, sometimes it looks as if the government is working against small businesses. Um, so those are some of the challenges we face from time to time. Um, but as an entrepreneur, you have to be creative to find ways to, you know, surmount and go around those challenges. And a little birdie told me that business. you recently got um, international support to the tune of about three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. 
um, euros. Euros, oh, yeah. brilliant, even better. Yeah. So how accessible are these grants for Nigerian businesses? Um, so um, uh, external funding, grants, you know, equity, they are, they are quite accessible. There is a paucity of them. It's not as if you know, it, it's much, but they are there. If you can run a sustainable and structured business, you can convince people that if I put money into this business, it's going to go from 10 to 100 or from 100 to 1,000. You know, that's the trajectory that investors and donors want to see. And if they see that this business is structured, it is not just reliant on one man, and, you know, that with or without the pioneers or the founders, this business has a potential to, sus to be sustainable over the long, the long haul. There is a very good chance that you know you're going to get capital. I mean, if you follow the startup scene or the growth scene in Nigeria, a lot of businesses are raising capital nowadays, and you know you just have to convince people that you know they are money, they'll be able to get it back because they're not charity anyway. There's so much I still want. I'd like to ask because you mentioned a very valid point about how investors would see the fact that you already have a structure and the business can survive without you before they decide to invest in this. And I know that you also have opportunities where you get to lecture and you teach people about stuff like this. And you have one coming up soon. So tell us about it. Uh, okay, so um, I, I'll be speaking at the Do It Afraid conference. Um, it's happening on the 18th of um, November at the Glade Center. And you know, it's hosted by Umnala Oshikoya. That, that's, you know, the immediate one, you know, I can, I can think of right now. Okay, so yeah. and it's free for people to attend, right? Yeah, it's free, but I, I believe you must register. And if you go to Rumilola Oshikoya's page on Instagram, um, there's a link there. Um, you can register. How, how, what, what are the things we're expecting you to teach at the, at the conference? Or what are you going to be speaking about? Um, so for me, it's first of all telling my journey, how I you know, started the business with my wife, you know, overcoming the challenges. Because entrepreneurs also have to understand that challenges are part of the business. Um, I say you can't divorce success from challenge because if you look at every success that we talk about, it's because they have overcome a challenge. So I'll be talking about that. I'll also be talking about how I've sustainably run and grown this business over the eight, over eight years. You know, talking about structures that have been put in place. You know, up to the point of now, you know, attracting external financing. So just things around, you know, what you need to do as a startup entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur who has been in business, who's looking to grow. Um, and there are also many other fantastic you know, speakers that will be sp speaking in depth about finance and, and other areas of you know, running businesses. Thank you so much for coming to join us. Esther, do you like going for conferences as well? Definitely. I think they're very important because we need to have these conversations. There are many people who want to go into business who are already in business, already making some very serious mistakes. And it's important that people who have gone ahead come together to share their lessons, to share stories for other younger people coming up so that they can learn. They say it's better for you to learn from the experiences of someone else. You don't have to always learn yeah, from your personal absolutely. experience. Exactly. So if you're out there and you want to be a part of this, you'd like to learn, you should attend the Do It Afraid conference. It's a free conference. You know, we're all about supporting uh, basically anything that would empower you. So it's free at Do It Afraid on social media. You can follow Omilola at Omilola Oshikoya on Instagram for more, in, for more details as to when it's happening. It's happening on the 18th of November, 18th if of I remember, November, yeah. at the Glitz Event Center starting at 2 p.m. Yeah. yeah, so you need to register before you attend, but it's free for, for all to attend. How can people follow you on social media? Um, so you can follow So Fresh at So Fresh NG. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us, Goki Balogun. Thank you. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.